All right, so I want to make sure that I go over this, uh, the Birmingham jail details and the assignment for those of you who are at home so you understand what I'm looking for. Because the first part we're going to do, we are doing in class together. So I want to do this together also then for those of you who may be absent or who are at home because it's not an easy assignment and it really gets you to look for details, hence the reason why we're doing it. Um, for each one of these, uh, those of you who are at home, I have listed the sections and what you're supposed to do for each of them. So uh, there is the assignment. It's divided up into three sections. Um, paragraphs 1 to 10, read aloud and annotate together. After reading paragraph 1, respond to the following questions. So make sure you're reading over this and you're doing what is uh, asked of you for each one of these. Okay, so really take your time. Um, a highlighter is now, since you're doing this from home and you have the assignment I'm giving you to, you just have to use the highlighter that is given to you on, you know, uh, the usual. So if you go over here, you can highlight, boom, there you go. All right, and then you can uh, update and highlight things as you go. So if I wanted to change this, make a key for the following, like, oh, okay, I'm going to highlight that in yellow, and bam, then it's highlighted. Okay, now I need to get rid of it. And I did. Okay. All right. So keep that in mind as you're doing it. So we're looking at ethos, logos, and pathos. Okay. So make sure you're thinking about this. Oh, okay. You know, ethos, remember that's uh, ethical appeal. Um, so in some form, how are they appealing to make this? Oh, this is a trusted source, right? You should trust them even more so. Uh, pathos is emotional. How does it, you know, deal with emotion? And then logos is logic. So just basic, you know, facts and, and uh, you know, just uh, a lot of times someone brought up today the idea, a lot of times it sounds like common sense. Well, yeah, that can look at it too, you know, and how they're looking at things, okay? So the logical appeal, all right, of things. So we'll look at that. Um, what's the purpose? Who's the audience? What is the tone? All right, put those, again, it's telling you sort of where to put that if you can. All right, do your best to do that. Um, analyzing the appeals, what, uh, which ones are the most effective, and annotating them. And then for the first section, you're going to need to find an illusion. Okay, one example. There are many, and I'm going to point them out as I read it. Uh, antithesis. There's one paragraph where you have three. It's boom, boom, boom. Okay, circle it, identify it. So identify the antithesis for us. Rhetorical question. Those are pretty easy because if you see a question mark, on an essay, especially, oh, that's probably a rhetorical question. Um, what they're doing, again, is just to get you to think. You're not going to stop and just start writing an answer to it. And then connotations. Well, find some words that really are powerful, that uh, have a, maybe a negative and or positive feel when you read them. So that's what we're looking at. So let's go to the letter to Birmingham Jail. And right away, we see who he's addressing. Okay, his audience is right there, my dear fellow clergymen. All right, and remember, clergymen is as not everyone knows what that is. You know, it's more it's a word that we probably don't use as much as we used to. And all a clergyman is is a religious leader. And this is important to know. Now, King is writing this letter because a call to unity was a letter that they ate um, white. Uh, clergyman wrote condemning and admonishing King's actions and calling him being disruptive. And so that's why Birmingham uh, actually had passed a law and saying you couldn't protest or demonstrate. And knowing that that's probably what Martin Luther King was going to do. And, you know, King then was arrested and the clergymen were sort of admonishing what he did. And this is King's response. So, my dear fellow clergymen, while well, confined here in Birmingham City Jail, I came across your recent statement calling our present activities unwise and untimely. Seldom, if ever, do I pause to answer criticism of my work and ideas. If I sought to answer all the criticism that crossed my desk, my secretaries would be engaged in little else in the course of the day, and I would have no time for constructive work. But since I feel that you are men of genuine goodwill and your criticisms are sincerely set forth, I would like to answer your statement in what I hope will be patient and reasonable terms. So we get the tone. He almost tells you the tone. The tone is rather calm. It's like, I'm just going to give you, you know, here's an answer to what you have said. Patient and reasonable terms. It's almost like that's telling you what the tone is going to be. Okay. And his purpose, okay, is he's going to answer these criticisms. He's going to tell them, okay, 
you know, what he hopes to be. He likes, he's answering their statement. So that's what he is doing here with this. So you have your, your audience right here. You have your purpose. I would like to answer your statement. And then your tone, patient, reasonable, is very calm tone. He's going, you know, he's not accusatory or anything like that. It's very calm. I think I should give the reason for my being in Birmingham, since you have been influenced by the argument of outsiders coming in. I have the honor of serving as president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, an organization operating in every southern state with headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. We have some 85 affiliate organizations all across the South, one being the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights. Whenever necessary and possible, we share staff, educational, and financial resources with our affiliates. Several months ago, our local affiliate here in Birmingham invited us to be on call to engage in a nonviolent direct action program, if such were deemed necessary. We readily consented, and when the hour came, we lived up to our promises. So I am here, along with several members of my staff, because I have basic organizational ties here. We get a combination of things, and sometimes it's not always just ethos, logos, and pathos. Uh, sometimes you can combine them a little bit, and maybe one uh, stands out a little bit more than the other. So that's why you use it. Um, and here you have this appeal to the, that ethos, that ethical appeal. And when he starts talking about how he is president of the Southern Christian Leadership Con uh, Conference, um, being part of the Alabama Bama Christian Movement for Human Rights, all this here, it appeals, it's an ethical appeal because this is our, you know, religious leaders, Christian religious leaders. So King is saying, here, this is what I'm part of. I can be, I am trusted too because I'm, you know, part of this Christian leadership and Christian movement. You get some, uh, also the idea of logical appeal if you want to, you know, in explaining himself. Um, here, you, you get just logical, this is what we're doing. I mean, this is why I'm here. I have ties here, okay? Beyond this, I am in Birmingham because injustice is here. Just as the 8th century prophets left their little villages and carried their, thus saith the Lord, far beyond the boundaries of their hometowns, and just as the Apostle Paul left his little village of Tarsus and carried the gospel of Jesus Christ to practically every hamlet and city of the Greco-Roman world, I too am compelled to carry the gospel of freedom uh, beyond my particular hometown. Like Paul, I must constantly respond to the Macedonian call for effort. Um, again, we start off actually this idea of injustice. That's a strong connotative word. Injustice, you get a negative feel right from when you hear that. So injustice, you get the connotation there. And that first sentence is rather like more pathos there. After that, then, he does the ethical appeal again. This um, whole part here, he is, you know, invoking Christianity, uh, the name of Apostle Paul, you know, a famous Christian, and also, you know, Jesus, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So this is, again, that ethical appeal is right in there, is what he's using. Moreover, I am cognizant of the interrelatedness of all communities and states. I cannot sit idly by in Atlanta and not be concerned about what happens in Birmingham. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Never again can we afford to live with the narrow, provincial, outside agitator idea. Anyone who lives inside the United States can never be considered an outsider anywhere in the country. So in this, if you go back and you look at that idea of antithesis, we have quite a few examples of here uh, that are happening here. So injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So injustice, injustice, okay, those two opposite ideas. Um, whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly, directly and indirectly. Um, uh, the idea of the outside agitator idea, anyone who lives inside the United States can never be considered an outsider. So inside, outside. So he does a great job with antithesis in this. And then uh, we get a nice uh, figure of language there. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Right there, some great uh, metaphor there that he uses. So it's a very eloquent language. We deplore the demonstrations that are presently taking place in Birmingham, but I am sorry that your statement does not express a similar concern for the conditions that brought the demonstrations into being. I'm sure that each of you would want to go beyond the superficial social 
analyst who looks merely at effects and does not grapple with underlying causes. I would not hesitate to say that it is unfortunate that so-called demonstrations are taking place in Birmingham at this time, but I would say in more emphatic terms that it is even more unfortunate that the white power structure of the city left the Negro community with no other alternative. Um, starts off that pathos you have that you deplore another word with heavy connotations here. Uh, deplore it almost like it's, it's almost worse than hate. You deplore the demonstrations that are taking place. All right, so the connotation of deplore there gets some emotion involved. But I would say that most of the rest is rather logical and in, in logos, and he's just giving you these facts of why they're doing what they are doing. And the same thing at the start of the next paragraph, um, a very uh, logical here in any nonviolent campaign there are four basic steps collection of the facts to determine whether justice or injustice are alive negotiation self-purification and direct action we've gone through all of these steps in birmingham there could be no gainsaying of the fact that racial injustice engulfs this community and gainsaying is another a term for uh, um, denying so denying the fact birmingham is probably the most thoroughly segregated city in the united states it's ugly record of police brutality is known in every section in this country its unjust treatment of Negroes in the courts is a notorious reality. There have been more unsolved bombings of Negro homes and churches in Birmingham than any city in this nation. These are the hard, brutal, and unbelievable facts. On the basis of these conditions, Negro leaders sought to negotiate with the city fathers, but the political leaders consistently refused to engage in good faith negotiation. This is a great example of you have logos, you have pathos right there. So uh, you have these the connotative words, ugly record, police brutality, phrases, unjust treatment of Negroes, notorious reality, um, the, the, the heavy connotations of those really stick out. And also, he's being very logical in what he is saying and what's happening. He's giving you facts and more unsolved, you know, bombings of Negro homes and churches in Birmingham than any city in this nation. What's more powerful than that's just the, the fact and the emotion of that is just extremely powerful. Um, so uh, keep that in mind, how he weaves this together. Then came the opportunity last September to talk with some of the leaders of the economic community. In these negotiation sessions, certain promises were made by the merchants, such as the promise to remove the humiliating racial signs from the stores. On the basis of these promises, Reverend Shuttlesworth and the leaders of the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights agreed to call a moratorium on any type of demonstrations. As the weeks and months unfolded, we realized that we were the victims of a broken promise. The signs remain. Like so many experiences in the past, we were confronted with blasted hopes and the dark shadow of a deep disappointment settled upon us. So we had no alternative except of preparing for direct action, whereby we would present our very bodies as a means of laying our case before the conscience of the local and national community. We were not mindful of, we were not unmindful of the difficulties involved, so we decided to go through a process of self-purification. We started having workshops on nonviolence and repeatedly asking ourselves the questions, are you able to accept blows without re retaliating? Um, are you able to endure the ordeals of jail? We decided to secure direct action programs around the Easter season, um, realizing that with the exception of Christmas, this was the largest shopping period of the year. Knowing that a strong economic withdrawal program would be a byproduct of direct action, we felt that this was the best time to bring pressure to the merchants for the needed change. Then it occurred to us that the March election was ahead, so we speedily decided to postpone action until after Election Day. When we discovered that Mr. Connor was in the runoff, we decided again to postpone action so that the demonstration could not be used to cloud the issues. At this time, we agreed to begin our nonviolent witness the day after the runoff. So there's a lot there. In some versions, this is actually split up into a couple paragraphs. Uh, we do have some uh, ethical appeal here on the basis of the promise of where other sellers worth and Alabama Christian movement for human rights. Again, he's evoking that ethical appeal there. Um, after that, he uh, logic why we're doing this, why we're demonstrated. You know, the idea of the broken promise is again another connotative phrase. Um, but any I mean, blasted hopes, okay, a dark shadow of deep disappointment settled upon us. So you have a lot of connotation there, in those phrases, and the negative uh, you know, emotions come there. Okay. So we had no alter, um, alternative except that of preparing direct action. So then after that, he lays out his case of why we did it, why we are 
uh, pursuing what we did. Okay, um, you know why we set up this program, and so very uh, logical thinking there. You have your rhetorical questions. So right here, again, you see the question marks. You can pretty much it can be a nice little tip off there. Um, but uh, you have rhetorical questions. Uh, you know, are we able to accept those without react to retaliating? Are you able to endure the ordeals of jail? All right. Um, so make sure you identify those. And then finally, this reveals that we did not move irresponsibly into direct action. We want, we, we too wanted to see Mr. Connor defeated. So we went through postponement after postponement to aid in this community need. And this, we felt that direct action could be delayed no longer. Well, very good, excellent point there. This is why we did it. So again, that logo is why we're doing this, all right. so. Hopefully that was helpful. I will do a, a part on section two also. Um, so keep that in mind and make sure in, in watching these, I'm hoping it will help you. So if you have questions, let me know so I can answer them for you and get you moving in the right direction. Thanks everybody. Have a good day.